All right, this should be the second video if you're having a wide lid. Um, so let's just draw out what we've got here. So for a wide lid, there's a front and back. And two sides and base and the lid. The lid has little hinges like this. And these ones have receptacles for the hinges. Okay, so you should already have this one done. Uh, and this one, because they're the same part. We're going to do these two parts right here. Uh, there are two separate parts, because it turns out one of them is a little shorter, because this lid is going to be resting on top of this piece here, so it doesn't fall into the box. Because that would be uh, inconvenient, to say the least. Um, so we're going to be drawing these two pieces. They are two separate parts. But they are very close to each other. And you should already have these two parts done. And after this, we will make lids. And then I'll finish it off with the one universal piece that is the same for either one. Yeah. So let's just get rid of those. And the first thing we're going to do on all of these, we're going to make a four inch by three inch box so that our dimensions are preserved and I don't have to worry about scaling issues. We don't want scaly drawings. All right, so uh, let's go through, and actually put a dimension on them. They are three by two. And let's put some finger joints on them. Now, uh, for this short sides with hinges, you started at the bottom and went up. We're going to start at the top and go down this time because when the finger joints come together, you want to make sure the fingers that are sticking out are um, not hitting each other. And the one finger goes with one like webbing of the hand so that they go together. All right. So let's do. One eighth plus one eightieth and one fourth plus one eightieth. We do this a lot. And um, I'll do rectangular and direction here, and it's going up where we don't want it to. Down, we're going to do four, five, and we're going to remember to remove associatives so we can trim, 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 trim. Oh, there we go. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. We're going to do One eight plus one eightieth. And we're going to do one fourth plus one eightieth. It's a rectangle. We're going to do these two sides. We're going to do this direction. We're going to do two. There's a four point five. We're going to do undo associative. And we're going to trim, 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 trim. Oh, they're so nice and actually trimmed. Almost never did that. All right. Uh, let's move this bench out a little bit. Uh, okay. So we don't need a hinge on the top, but we do need some holes for the pin joints that are going to come on through. The pins and joints. Um, and I'm going to do a center point rectangle. And I am going to try to constrain it to the center here. 
horizontal, I'm going to try to make sure there's no other constraints or else it's going to try to preserve those when I dimension it into the location. So, 25 by 8, giving it the exact size so that it's a nice firm fit and holds everything together. Then I'm going to say from the bottom edge to that edge is going to need to be one eight. Turns out it doesn't matter how big that is. Let me make sure that. Um, doesn't matter as long as it's the same on every single one. As long as each one of them is one eight, it's fine. You can have them all at one quarter. You can have them all at one sixteen. But I suspect you'll have model one eight because that's what the instructions say. All right, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to do 25 wide by eight an inch, and I'm going to go from that edge to that edge right there by that dimension. I'm going to do one quarter. Or not one quarter, one eight. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to make a rectangle. It starts out at 22.5, plus 8. And then the dimension between that edge and that edge is 8. Ta da! And then I would put whatever design I want. And when I extrude it by an eighth of an inch, which I'm going to have to do because I'm, I'm going to have to assemble these. If the entire drawing doesn't go through, that's fine. Because remember, it's going to be cut on the laser cutter, not the 3D printer. So as long as the 2D drawing exists, you are good. I hit OK. Then I am going to go here and hit save as. This is uh, a long, tall side. Save it. And then I'm going to save it again. Save as. Now this is the long short. So it preserves the original one I have and I can now modify it. So I'm going to modify it and I'm going to make it a little shorter. I am going to draw a line. I'm going to try to make sure it's not lining up with anything, and I'm going to make it an eighth of an inch shorter. Good. I did not, uh, in fact, change any of my finger joints. And then I am going to go through and I'm going to delete that dimension, or else things are going to get weird. That dimension, I'm going to delete that dimension. I am going to start trimming things. Trim, trim, oh, it's not going to trim there. Let me just delete things as far as that goes. Oh, I'm still in trouble. Okay. Let's escape. Let's just start deleting things. I don't want to do that. That was weird. There we go. Oh, and I should probably turn this here because it's outside. There we are. And uh, this is a shorter part, and it will totally update. An eighth of an inch shorter. And if I wanted to include that thing as part of my dimension, I could just go here and hit shift. There we are. Not that it's going to actually go like that because we're not 3D printing, we are laser cutting. It's not going to cut all the way through. Um, 
But uh, yeah, there's the shorter spot. And I hit save again so it doesn't erase it. So I've got a long side tall and a long side short. And uh, the lid is going to land on top of this one. And it should all be good. All right. So uh, we're going to move on to the lid itself. And then we're going to do the universal piece. And then we can do an assembly. And we need some of it. 